The first industrial revolution began in around 1760. This revolution saw a shift from creating goods by hand to using machines. This revolution is then thought to have transitioned into the second revolution around the 1850s. The second revolution was when things really started to pick up. Advancements in technology, electricity and mass production took industry to a whole new level. In the year 1850, the UK was by far the world's largest CO2 emitter. Its emissions were so large, they were in fact nearly six times greater than that of the United States, who at the time ranked second. The next three largest emitters were France, Germany and Belgium. For reference, the UK's CO2 emissions were around 10 million tonnes in 1850, compared to around 350 million tonnes today. Globally, emissions were around 500 million tonnes per year in 1850, whereas today they are more like 36 billion. Now, we of course all know that this rise in emissions creates a greenhouse effect on the planet, which effectively warms it up, which results in ice melting, causing sea levels to rise. But by how much exactly? Maybe a couple or a few metres since 1850? Well, actually, no, it's incremental increases. Estimates suggest around 25 to 30 centimetres. But what would happen if all ice on Earth melted? How much would sea levels rise? Well, if all ice on the planet melted, sea levels are estimated to rise some 70 metres. This is how the Earth would look. 60 of those 70 metres would come from the Antarctic ice sheet melting, around 7 metres from Greenland, and then around 0.4 metres from mountain glaciers and ice caps. So let's take a deeper look into what our new world looks like. So the US has lost a lot of its eastern coast. A decent chunk of Brazil has been wiped out in South America, Central Asia and Northern Russia have been decimated, a lot of Europe, the UK especially, has been wiped out. But then Africa and Australia remain relatively untouched and have retained their general shape. So let's make this video a bit more interesting by seeing what the world map would look like if we were to increase sea levels around the world by a thousand metres, that's a kilometre or 0.62 miles. Now of course this isn't possible, as if all ice melted we wouldn't even get 10% of that, but just for fun let's pretend this hypothetical scenario could one day happen. So this is how our new world map looks, pretty unrecognisable, right? Let's now travel around our new world, investigating the most notable changes, starting with Australia down under. So Australia is all but pretty much wiped out. It's gone from a landmass of some 7.7 .7 million kilometres squared to this tiny clump of islands on its east coast. The rest of the country no longer exists. Hopping across the Tasman Sea, we have New Zealand, which has pretty much lost its entire North Island. However, its South Island has actually survived somewhat. This is due to the mountainous landscape of the region. What's kind of crazy is that New Zealand is now just as big, if not bigger, than Australia. Moving north of Oceania, we arrive in Southeast Asia slash the Malay Archipelago, which just like Australia, has been completely wiped out. So Papua New Guinea's highlands have managed to survive this 1,000 sea level rise. It now actually looks like it could be larger than both Australia and New Zealand, cementing itself as Oceania's new largest country. Borneo, the world's third largest island, is pretty much non-existent now. The Philippines has been whittled down to just a few clumps of islands, and mainland Southeast Asia has been completely obliterated. However, there is something very, very interesting about this region. Take a look at Indonesia with this region specifically. So across Sumatra, Java and the Lesser Sunda Islands, you have this interesting and rather satisfying island chain that is now formed. Any ideas how and why? Well, this is a map of Indonesia's volcanoes, meaning the peaks of these volcanoes and mountains have survived the sea level rise. However, the remaining land across these islands has not. Let's now move further north to China. Now, although China looks to have lost maybe close to half of its entire land, it now appears to be perhaps the world's largest country. This is due to the western part of the country being found so high up. The same applies to Mongolia, who only appears to have lost a small-ish part of its land. Just south of China, we have Bhutan and Nepal, who in terms of percentage of land loss, are two of the safest countries in the world. 
Some 98% of Bhutan's land is above a thousand metres, meaning the country has barely changed whatsoever. For Nepal, this is around 75%, so again keeping the majority of its land. The same can't be said for East Asia, where South Korea to North Korea's joy pretty much no longer exists alongside Japan. Russia is now no longer the world's largest country. It has lost the vast majority of its land to Mother Nature. Some parts in its east have survived, however, meaning it's now only around a million to two million kilometres squared, if I'd have to make an estimate. India now also barely exists. It's been reduced to this small archipelago in its south. It looks more like what the Maldives looks like currently. Speaking of the Maldives, this country is long gone. With the country's average elevation being just 1.5 metres, the lowest on Earth, this country disappeared in the blink of an eye. Much of the Middle East also now no longer exists. Much of Iran actually still remains, making it the largest country in the region. It looks like it's just a little bit bigger than Turkey. Let's continue to move west, now into Europe. So most of Europe has been wiped out. Most countries have become tiny island nations, with perhaps Spain now being the largest country in the continent. Around 60% of Switzerland is above a thousand meters, meaning over half of the country has survived. But as the country was small to start with, it's still not the largest on the continent. It might squeeze into the top five largest, however. I am currently deep underwater as the entirety of the UK and in fact the British Isles looks to have seeded into the oceans. Norway, Sweden and Finland have only just survived, to which they have all became island countries. Now although Denmark has been completely wiped out, Greenland, which is a Danish territory, has survived. As around 80% of the island is above a thousand meters, meaning the territory is now around 1.4 million kilometers squared, making it now one of the largest landmasses on the planet. So let's continue moving west where we arrive into North America. So other than Canada's far northeast, most of North America's eastern seaboard has been completely wiped out, forming this new long and narrow-ish stretch of land, ranging from Alaska all the way down to western Mexico. Mexico has detached from Central America, which has also suffered some big losses. North and South America are now no longer connected via the isthmus country of Panama. Panama is now a dual island country with Costa Rica. South America follows a similar story to that of North America. Most of the eastern part of the continent has been wiped out, whereas much of its west remains. Brazil, which is today easily the largest country on the continent, has lost its crown as the largest country, as it's now been reduced to just an archipelago within the Atlantic. It's hard to say which country on the continent is now the largest, maybe Argentina. But due to the Mercator projection distorting country sizes, maybe even Peru, which is closer to the equator, could give Argentina a run for its money as the continent's new largest country. So Africa has a super interesting new look to it. Much of the southern parts of the country have survived. It looks like maybe Angola or South Africa could now be the largest country on the continent. But then you've also got Ethiopia, who as just mentioned with South America, finds itself closer to the equator, so it appears smaller than it actually is. Much of the central, western and northern regions of Africa have been wiped out. You've got parts of Algeria and Morocco that have survived due to the high altitudes of the Atlas Mountains. Many countries that were once landlocked have been freed and now have ocean access and Cape Verde has become even more remote. A country who has seen only a small amount of land loss is Lesotho, who sees around 80% of its land above a thousand meters. Although due to the regions of South Africa that surround it also being high up, it is still landlocked. So there we have it, that's how our new world looks if sea levels were somehow able to rise a thousand meters. Like and subscribe for more content like this, and as always, thank you very much for watching.